Where were you two years ago today? Probably at home, watching the news and hearing about the first COVID-19 case that was identified in Belize. Today marks the two-year anniversary of when the case was first announced, and since then, we've endured lockdowns, curfews, and endless asides. But in those first moments, 9 a.m. on March 23rd, 2020, it was like the world stood still and then erupted into chaos as Belizeans began panic buying and store owners began price gouging. And everyone who could bought a one-way ticket off San Pedro, where the first patient resided. And one man who was at the center of the fury in those early days was Dr. Marvin Manzanero. Today, he recalled what it was like when he was first informed of the case. The case had actually been um, swamped as a potential case from the Friday. Um, so that was March 20th. That sample was initially processed on the Saturday, March 21st. And I recall distinctly receiving the call of that first case from Saturday night going on to Sunday morning. Um, but actually, it's actually Sunday morning around 1.30 in the morning is when the lab had called to confirm that that sample had turned out to be a positive uh, situation. So we knew from Sunday, March 22nd, um, I of course had to alert um, the persons who supervised me and then it went, I believe, to the prime minister then. And um, it was decided that the best way to, you know, because there are so many unknowns was that if we could announce it on, on the Monday, um, of course, preparations in terms of how measures and what other situations needed to be dealt with were taken care of on the Sunday, um, contact tracing and all of that. So uh, the announcement was made on the Monday, um, March 23rd, um, two years ago. There was even levels of protection that need to be gathered for this uh, index case and her family. Uh, because as you would recall, other than the shelves being emptied, it's also people with threats and, and people saying, uh, you know, wanted to burn houses and stuff like that. Lots of stigma situations happening there. So whenever the situation came about to, to lock down San Pedro, and you know, it didn't happen immediately, it was announced. Uh, and in the 48 hours, as then food is when people started leaving um, the island. Again, you don't expect that that's exactly what's going to happen. Uh, because it's not only people who went to the island for work purposes, but you also have people who are natives of San Pedro who are actually leaving. And that has to do with the stigma associated that, to the particular situation. Less than a month later, on April 5th, was the first COVID casualty. Easter was cancelled and then there was another day. We were plunged into a countrywide lockdown. I do recall that the cases that started to show up after that were in the Cayo district related and linked to Belize City. Um, so the discussions we had is, okay, we need to be able to cordon off areas in the Cairo district so that you can do an adequate mapping, an adequate surveillance measure, because you're trying to do containment. It was considered initially, I can tell you that. Um, and then, you know, once you start seeing what happened in, in San Pedro, it, it's not possible. And so that's what I think triggered the initial lockdown for the entire country that would then go on for 90 days. So we came out on the other side, but that only led to a deep dive into the deadliest part of the pandemic. The end of 2020 and the start of 2021 saw the death count surge as a COVID contagion took hold. And that first weekend um, when the country opened back up, um, you start seeing the links of cases popping up in San Pedro, um, linked to Orange Walk, uh, which is where it now shows that, I mean, I know the cases said, oh, it exploded in San Pedro, but it, their link was with Orange Walk and the illegal crossings that had happened. You know, so you had an, a seeming numbers growing there. And of course, that first weekend in July is when you started having places opening up and, and hotels giving discounts, particularly for Belizeans. And I think that's when it really started to, to move on to, to what would be the second, the start of, of a second wave, if you will. And after that second wave was a third, with the Omicron variant. But while that variant resulted in thousands of new cases, it wasn't as deadly as Delta, and now it is slowly subsiding. And over those two years, we've done a complete 180, from establishing strict regulations to relaxing them. And throughout that time, a lot of information and experience has been garnered. But if there's still one bit of advice Dr. Manzanera has to offer, it's to not let your guard down. Well, I, I think that the key item is that we should have learned something individually from what we went through. 
not only in terms of the potential exposure to COVID, but perhaps in terms of how we deal with our lives around our family, around the work structure, um, around our community. Um, we should have become a more resilient uh, community. Um, and in essence, yes, we will have to learn to live with COVID. So even if all regulations are, are, are lifted, uh, um, uh, there might be um, times when those will have to be reenacted or brought into play at different levels. But I think we individually and as, a, as family units, you need to have your own plan of function as you move along. Courtney Menzies, 7 News.